Our last blood cell will be erythrocytes. And this is the most numerous of all the blood cells, the hematocytes. And so basically, here's the term erythrocyte, common name, RBC, red blood cells. And why are they called red blood cells? Because they stain pink, pink color to slightly red, but I'd say more of the pinkish color. They have only one function, the erythrocytes, and that's to carry oxygen and CO2. But to carry CO2 uh, on their cell membranes, to get rid of it, you have to have a bicarbonate uh, dissolved in your plasma so that you can load the CO2 onto the uh, blood cell. And we'll be talking about that when we get to the respiratory system, when we do the exchange of oxygen and CO2. But anyway, so that is its only function, the erythrocytes, they do all the gas exchanges, period. So now, where do they develop? They develop in the bone marrow, okay, from a loose CT cell called the megalohematocyte, just like the other ones. And so when they're in the, in the uh, bone marrow, they actually have a nucleus. And now this is the strange part. When they diffuse into the capillary, the nucleus disappears, it just disintegrates. So they have no nucleus when they're out in circulation. And so if they do have a nucleus, that could mean bone marrow cancer. So we don't want to have that, okay? So basically, here it is. Here's a normal red blood cell. It should have like a, some red cytoplasm, pinky cytoplasm, and a nucleus when it's in the bone marrow, okay? So in the bone marrow, there it is. But then when it squeezes out into the capillary, it loses that nucleus. It's gone, it just disintegrates. And that's something that cannot explain why that does that. It's uh, one of the mysteries of science. And so anyway, basically it has no nucleus, but it does look like somebody took a thumb and just imprinted where the nucleus would sit. So it does make a slight depression, but you can't say there's a nucleus. So uh, it is totally gone. So now the color of the cytoplasm is due to two things. The oxygen level uh, being carried on the uh, cell membrane and in the cytoplasm. And then the second thing that determines the color of the cytoplasm is the amount of hemoglobin uh, dissolved in the cytoplasm. And so basically, what is hemoglobin? If you break down the word, hemo stands for iron, okay? And globin stands for protein. So it's a piece of, it's a compound made out of iron and protein. And so it's like a magnet. You need to think of it like a magnet and it will attract oxygen and CO2. And so it's dissolved in the cytoplasm all the time and it will hold both. And so up here, I did a little picture. Here's a red blood cell, and here's the hemoglobin right here. The green is the hemoglobin right there. And so it's either going to hold CO2 or it's going to hold oxygen, right? And so it's like a magnet effect. So when it is loaded with oxygen, when oxygen is attached to the hemoglobin, they call it oxyHB. HB is the official abbreviation for hemoglobin, okay? Big H, little um, B. And so oxyhemoglobin means the red blood cell is all loaded with uh, oxygen. And then we have three different terms for when it's carrying CO2. And so it's called carbanohemoglobin, carboxylhemoglobin, or cyanohemoglobin. And so uh, basically those are the terms meaning CO2 is attached to the hemoglobin. So basically the acidophilic color of the cytoplasm is due to the amount of oxygen being carried and uh, the amount of hemoglobin in um, that particular red blood cell. All right, so that is uh, the major anatomy of the uh, red blood cell. It's not very difficult, very straightforward. And so basically, how many of these do you have? Oh, red blood cells, you have anywhere from four to six million. And they only last three months, three months. So you get a new batch. Uh, you know, they're all on a different uh, time cycle, 
Um, but basically, every three months, you're going to get new ones, right? And so where do the erythrocytes go to die? You already learned this for the first test. The digestive system, the liver. The liver destroys what? Thrombocytes and <clears throat> platelets, right? Thrombocytes are platelets and also destroys all your erythrocytes. So the liver is the graveyard. The graveyard for white blood cells, that would be lymph nodes, lymph nodes. Okay, so now, last thing on red blood cells. <laughs> on red blood cells, we have over here, we have eight abnormal red blood cells that you can see in a simple light microscope blood smear. And so when we test your blood, uh, basically we're gonna make a blood smear and then we're gonna look for some of these abnormal red blood cells and hope that we don't see them. And so here they are. And so they're listed in the book, the lab book, but the, uh, she doesn't show pictures of them. So I drew them and uh, we will see them on your blood smears, maybe. And hopefully not, some of them you don't wanna see. So first of all, a crenated one. Crenated means the overall blood cell is not, not round and smooth. It shrinks, it has uh, the membrane is sort of uh, shriveling. And so basically it means you got too much salt in your diet or too much salt in your plasma of your blood, right? So you gotta look at your kidney function and your diet. And so you don't want your red blood cells to shrink because then you can't carry enough oxygen or CO2. All right, then hypertonic means the whole red blood cell gets way larger, really big. And so basically it means too much water. You got too much water in your plasma. So maybe you're drinking too much water and your kidneys can't regulate it well, or you have kidney malfunction, right? So that's hypertonic. And then we have acantho, and you never want to see acanthos. Um, I've seen these in a few of my students way back in the day, and not a good uh, sign at all. But anyway, it does alert you to, if you see these spines, um, the spines, or they look like toothpicks coming out, uh, it means you have cancer somewhere in the body. It doesn't tell you where, but it's saying that you got abnormal cell growth, and that would be a cancer. So you need to find out where those are coming from. Right, and so then we're gonna go up to, right here, number four, they're called the Heinz uh, RBCs, the Heinz, just like the ketchup, and they have carbon deposits, carbon deposits on the red blood cells. They look like little round balls, or they can make like a black slimy layer on the cell membrane. And so these are from smokers, tobacco products. So if you do chewing tobacco, if you do the vaping, whatever has uh, tobacco-based uh, things in it, that's gonna produce the uh, Heinz bodies, right? So the Heinz RBCs. And then uh, if you stop smoking or cigars, cigarettes, whatever you're doing, they'll go away, right? Now you won't have any damage. But the more of these that you have, the less oxygen you will carry and you'll become very forgetful and very sleepy, right? Okay, target RBCs. I see these all the time in my students, not unusual. They have a clear center. They look like Cheerios or a donut. And basically it means you're anemic. You're carrying low amounts of oxygen, right? And so you need to get more iron in your diet to uh, make more hemoglobin. So that's what the target erythrocyte looks like. And then the next one is a fun one, Jolly Body. The Jolly Body has three different sizes of red blood cells stuck together. And they shouldn't have, no red blood cells should be sticking to each other. And so that just means that you have some bone marrow problems in the formation and production and release of your red blood cells. And so they're sticking together. Uh, your bone marrow could be stressed because it's uh, not getting fed well or it has some uh, abnormal activity going on. And so the blood cells aren't separated and they're three different sizes and they sort of look like a snowman. So that means bone marrow issues. All right, and then number seven is a bad one. If you see just one, just one, um, basically red blood cell with a nucleus, you can pretty much say you probably have the start of bone marrow cancer, right? And so of all the slides I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a lot of them, um, I have seen a few from students that had some nucleated red blood cells. 
and yes, they did have some form of cancer. So um, basically it was in bone marrow and then you have to figure out which bones uh, specifically where it started. So, so anyway, but they caught it and it was, it was fine. It was treated and it was early. So, and then the last one we have is a sickle shape. Sickle shape means C-shaped. So the whole cell just sort of shrinks down and becomes C-shaped. And that means you have a form of anemia, right? And this form of sickle cell anemia can be very life-threatening, right? But they are making progress on uh, gene therapy for this and it's becoming uh, much more curable, right, if caught early. So, the, and they do genetic testing for that also. All right, so that's the end of all of our uh, blood cells, their basic anatomy, what they do, and uh, some of the numbers. And then we'll probably have one more podcast summarizing all the blood things, and then that will be it.